Hey everyone, Cynix here. Recently, Huyan asked me if I would be interested in reviewing one of their tablets. Well, I've never done a tablet review before, so why not? Some of you may be aware that I've been using the same tablet for the entirety of my art journey. Yep, everything I've ever made has been done using the same Intuos 2 tablet that I've had for 15 years. I still have no real problem with it. As far as I'm concerned, hardware is rarely a barrier for artistic growth. Of course, some of you might not have found your tablet soulmate yet, so let's crack open this Huyan and see if it might be a potential suitor. This is the Inspiroi Q11K tablet. Kind of a strange name, but you can usually get this for around 120 bucks on Amazon. I would say that puts it in the entry price range for tablets. There are certainly cheaper ones, but I definitely don't recommend getting the cheapest version of really anything that's mildly important. Anyway, the packaging is nice, it comes with some replacement nibs, a stylus holder, and all of the necessary nonsense. I like the look of the tablet, it's simple and minimal. The weirdest aspect to me is that the stylus apparently has a battery that requires charging. Apparently, it very rarely needs to be recharged though, so that's good at least. The tablet itself can also be wireless, but I personally don't have any need for it to be, so I'll just leave it plugged in at all times. It also has eight programmable buttons, like most modern tablets, but those don't really fit into my workflow either, so I'm just gonna ignore those. The first thing you need to know about tablets is that you should always customize the sensitivity to your preferences. Using a tablet right out of the box will probably result in lines that are popping back and forth between high pressure and low pressure. That's no good. Smooth tapers are very important for drawing with a tablet. The device software has some minor adjustability, but it's best to adjust it in the actual art program you're using. Corel Painter has a great little brush tracking setting that quickly adjusts the sensitivity based on how heavy handed or light handed you are. With a little bit of fine tuning, I finally got some lines tapering and reacting in a way that feels more natural. After doodling around for a bit, there's still one thing that's really bugging me. I feel like I'm ice skating on this tablet. You may remember that on my old tablet, I had taped a piece of paper over the drawing area to give myself a better sense of texture and feel while drawing. It's the best thing I ever did, and I might as well slap a paper on this tablet as well. So, after some sick customization with some masking tape and a piece of paper, we're ready to go. This paper can also give you a strong visual sense of the actual drawing area on both of these tablets. The Huyan has an 11 by 7 inches of drawing area, which is nice. It's nearly the same as a standard sketchbook page. Personally, I'm not a fan of huge tablets, so this is about the maximum size I feel comfortable with. All right, enough of this preparation, let's really give this tablet a proper test. I'm going to be doing a photo study of one of my Patreon supporters, Celine. My painting and drawing skills were a bit on the slow side as I was trying to de-rust from my two week trip to China, which by the way, I'll tell you about later. But anyway, the pressure and response of the tablet actually feels great. I was feeling right at home in no time, which is all you really want from a tablet. Ideally, you just forget it's even there and get in a good drawing or painting zone. There are, however, a couple minor superficial issues that jumped out at me. First, the nib on the stylus is great, but every time you press down, it depresses into the stylus a lot, which means every time you lift up the stylus, it kind of pops back out. It's mildly distracting from both a tactile perspective and an audio perspective. I know that's a silly complaint, but I love the sounds of drawing and scraping a stylus against sketchbook paper. Just listen to my wonderful ASMR and how it gets disrupted by that constant noise of the stylus tip popping out every time you lift your pen. Eventually my brain managed to grow accustomed to this sound and feel for the most part, but I just wanted to mention it. My other minor gripe is with the size of the tablet versus the size of the drawing area. This ratio is one of my biggest gripes with the newer entry-level Wacom tablets as well. 
I like to rest my hand on the page while drawing, and constantly slipping off the side of a tablet can really mess with your comfort and control. Ideally, every tablet should have a nice buffer area of plastic outside of the drawing area to keep things comfortable. This is one thing that my old Entuos 2 did a great job with. It has just enough space to be comfortable even while navigating around the edge of the screen. Theoretically, I could just shrink down the actual drawing area on the Huion and maybe give myself one more inch of space on the right side. It does actually give you the options to map the tablet area however you want, so I guess this nitpick can actually be resolved by the tablet itself, although you would be losing some drawing area. But I just wanted to bring this topic up in case there's any potential tablet makers out there. Just remember, this isn't an iPhone. Functionality is actually super important, so throw on some junk plastic to extend the tablet's non-drawing area, and don't worry about how sleek it looks. Maybe this is actually a bigger nitpick on the newer entry-level Wacom tablets. I've tried their new Intuo series before of smaller tablets, and I honestly can't stand using them for an extended period of time. They're too small to hold on your lap, and the drawing surface extends right to the edge of the tablet with no real buffer. To be fair, I'm sure there are plenty of people who just prefer having something small to transport, but if you're working from the comfort of a desk, it would have been so much better to just throw a sketchbook-sized piece of plastic around whatever cheap 3x5-inch drawing surface they want to sell as an entry-level tablet. Plastic is cheap, so it shouldn't even change the cost of anything. Sorry, that was a bit of a tangent, but speaking of tangents, it looks like our photo study has entered the exciting realm of paint exploration. Yes, that's right, I'm hiding an episode of paint exploration inside of a tablet review. Now everyone who doesn't care about random tablet reviews has to miss out on my exciting Kappa Monster Girl, or whatever other creepy nonsense might happen. But back to my review, the stylus itself weighs pretty much the same as any drawing pen, and I don't really have any negative things to say about it. It's pretty comfortable, it doesn't have an eraser on the back like my old Wacom stylus, but that's also in my giant list of features I never used and never want to use. Speaking of which, it has a couple of buttons on it as well. Luckily, they don't protrude too much and don't seem to ever get in the way. I know some people like those buttons, I never use them, but as I click them, at least they do feel like they have a nice action to them. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect, but this tablet seems like a pretty good product overall. Maybe it will die someday or fall apart, but for now, I can't really think of anything horrible to say. I can recommend it over the base level Wacom products of a similar price. And I don't know, is this the best entry level tablet on the market? Well, there's plenty of tablets I haven't tried, but this is a review, so let's just say yes. I can't imagine too many ways to improve. A stylus nib that doesn't compress or have a battery, that might be nice. An extra inch of plastic on the right side of the tablet? That's pretty much all I got. Time and degradation will be the true test of this tablet. I don't expect this one to last for 15 years of heavy usage, like my old one, but I don't expect the newer Wacoms to do that either. I do really love how reliable my tablet has been over these past 15 years, and I don't think they make products quite that stable anymore. Meanwhile, what is going on with this paint exploration? You know, I really want to incorporate better compositional structure and color theory into the world of paint exploration. This whole silly method has so much room left for growth. It's both a great method for testing your visual library limitations, but more importantly, I'm going to try to start using it as a better tool to improve my eye for composition, which I've been sorely neglecting in these. And color theory too, I feel like my palettes are all over the place. And speaking of all these fundamentals of painting aspects, have you guys been watching Marco Bucci's YouTube videos? You really should be. Seriously, go check them out. Those are the videos that I watch when I want to refocus my painting skills toward better practices. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping things up. So in the background, I'll try to settle on a painting that can be simply divided into some simple shapes of dark and light. Maybe include a triangulation of focal points and try to save this mess. As far as this review goes, I'm going to give the Inspiroid Q11K a solid recommendation as a great tablet for any beginner and intermediate artist. Even if you're a professional, you'll probably be fine with it too. I don't know, it's not going to hold you back or anything. The name is pretty stupid though. Inspiroid? 
Maybe we can just call it Roy for short. You did good, Roy. Anyway, in the description below, you can find an Amazon link to Roy and check it out if you want. It's surprisingly good. Man, I feel like it would have been much more entertaining to give a horrible review of a horrible product. Oh well, maybe next time. Well, the review is basically over, and I would be ending the video right here, but it turns out I recorded way too much pain splurating, and I just can't even get it to fit in here no matter how much I speed it up. So please enjoy a short musical interlude while the colorful chaos in the background catches up to the end of the video. I'll be checking back on you in a minute. It looks like my little paint exploration here is finally coming to an end. It's actually reminding me a lot of the lazy paintings I used to make when I was a bit younger. Lots of nebulous rock formations and random flying ships with flapping cloths of bright colors and plenty of birds. That's fine and all, but I really do need to put in some sketchbook thumbnailing hours and blast out some better environmental compositions. It starts to get really obvious if you're neglecting your drawing skills and focusing on painting too much. Something to keep in mind. As always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. Look at you. You watched a product review and you probably don't even need a tablet. I'm proud of you. A huge additional thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially Celine for donating her face to this paint exploration. I'll try to spend more time in the Patreon Discord. Okay, see you everyone.